Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. I'm part of the click, isn't everybody? <laughs> yes! 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 I, I got an idea, yeah. Beat up John Cena! Give me a hell yeah! Hey, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Too sweet! following episode is scheduled for one fall, and it is for your listening pleasure. This is In The Click. What's up, everybody? Baby Huey here, and sitting right next to me is my brother, Tommy. How's it going? Good. How you doing? And joining us once again is our good brother from Pro Wrestling 101 on Instagram. It's Richard. How's it going, Richard? Hey, guys. How's it going? It's going good, man, dude. Like, so listen, uh, just to pull back the curtain just a little bit to all the clicksters out there. You know, we like to, uh, before we hit the record button, we like to brainstorm and talk things over behind, you know, before the show starts. And yeah, man, we spent probably what, at least 30 minutes breaking down everything. So much stuff to get into this week. It was a very busy week from the TV side of things. It was like so much to get into, which, but we're super excited for because when it's, I feel like some weeks, like that's one thing I love about doing this wrestling podcast is the freedom as far as there's some weeks where it's pretty news heavy stuff and we can have a lot of fun discussing all the current events and this and that, what's going on outside the ring. But then when there's a lot of stuff going on in the ring and all the TV shows are putting out a lot of fun stuff to talk about, that's also really fun too. So I just, I don't know about you guys, but that's just for me, it was like, when I was watching all these shows this week, I'm like, man, there's so many just little nuggets and little things we can get into. And I mean, I feel like no wonder there's so many other great shows out there who do like daily podcasts. Cause there's so much to talk about in the world of pro wrestling. But, uh, so for us, we'll do our best to get through everything. Talk about the highlights, some low lights from this week in pro wrestling. And as always, please follow in the click on uh, Apple podcast, Spotify, Google podcast, hit that subscribe button. Also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at in the click and uh, yeah a lot of stuff to talk about so first thing first we got like one major uh, bit of clickbait news and this is something that's actually been kind of evolving in the last couple of days so uh, uh, it came out I want to say what was it late Thursday or Friday at some point uh, I think it was what Richard was it Mike Johnson of uh, PWI was reporting was he the one that was making yes. the news so apparently, former uh, WWE diva Melina had re-signed with the company. And so a lot of people were super excited. It's like, oh, my God, the former Divas champion who's been away for like nine years is coming back to WWE. And, and a lot of people were – she was – a great talent for her time with the company accomplished a lot of things. And the reports were saying that she can come back as early as next week. And with that being said, it was like, Oh, will she be on raw or SmackDown? Where could she go? Maybe a, a reunion with Morrison somehow recreate an M&M somehow, but instead of Mercury have the Miz. I mean, there's a lot of speculation, which was very fun from a fantasy booking standpoint before she makes her return. But unfortunately, within the last like 24 hours of us from recording right now, she went on Facebook to state that, no, do not follow those reports. They're not true. She did not re-sign with the company. And she actually posted on Facebook. Uh, this is a couple of excerpts. Quote, I am not signed with the WWE, but that doesn't mean it is not a possibility. My reason for this post is that it bothers me that these sites lie to fans. And she added, I don't know what my future will hold, but I know 2020 has taken so much from me. From all of us, going back home to WWE would feel like everything I've gone through was for this very moment. But we don't know what is going to happen. So, and then that's in a quote for uh, that post. You can read the full post on her Facebook page. It's pretty lengthy. So, Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, so Richard... A couple things here. One, do you think this is a work? Do you think she's legit not 
is she really sigh, but she's trying to put a swerve on and trying to really create that maintain an element of surprise. I don't know what you're thinking with all of this. I think that she is definitely resigned. Okay. I think she's she's swerving the people that that she doesn't want to actually believe it because it got out so big. Because it, I mean, it blew up. Yeah. Like pages on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everyone was posting about mm-hmm. it, and. Um, I mean, look, you, you, the Royal Rumble's in January, so it's not like she signed in November, December. She signed now. You got to imagine maybe Zelina Vega is not the next opponent for, for, uh, Oscar. What if yeah. Melina under Zelina Vega, uh, takes on Oscar? Yeah. Well, that's the thing is uh, a couple things here. Tommy, I wanted to get your viewpoint on this as well as far as, okay, one. Yeah, I wonder the news broke and obviously that ruins the element of surprise whenever whatever show she does debut on again. So maybe she's posting this to kind of downplay that. And maybe when See, she- I don't I, I think it's a. I think if in the quarantine time that we're in, it's not ruined. I think it's enhanced because okay. if you're going into an arena and you know that she's going to be there, then it's ruined because the mm-hmm. fan reaction isn't going to be as as it would have been. But since there's no fans there, uh, it's going to be, you know, whatever their, their Thunderdome loud is. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I think it's, if anything, it's going to keep people or might even bring people to watch the shows more closely to see if she pops up or pops up in the background. And that's the thing. That's the catch twenty two in all this. As far as, as when reports come out, so and so making a return or re signing with the company, there you get people on both sides complaining. It's like, well, you ruined the element of surprise. But then the other people saying, well, they should promote that. That way, that would get people to tune in who maybe didn't want to tune in, or if they were a fan of that person back in the day, that gives them motivation to tune back in. And obviously, ratings are a big deal right now and a big focus on a lot of these news sites. So I can see when someone's coming back, they might want to promote it in advance. I mean, you and I, the three of us, we grew up back in the day in the 90s where someone would leave WWF, go over to WCW, and it was a big surprise when they showed up, or vice versa. I mean, God, remember how special that night was when Rick Rude was on both shows in one night, Raw yeah. and Nitro. That element of surprise, I mean, I, you can't have that today because of social media and everyone's trying to post breaking news on their wrestling and contracts. News and, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's a trip. So it's like that element of surprise, I think is long gone. And I think now when, when these signings are announced, it's more or less just to help promote that TV product and hopefully get more eyeballs to tune in. But Tommy, let me ask you this. If you were WWE and hypothetically, if Melina did resign, where would you put her on raw or SmackDown? What do you think is a better fit for her? Um, I would say raw. Raw? How come? I think she would have a better program with Asuka than she would be on SmackDown if it was involved with Bailey. Okay. Because, um, you know, let Bailey sort things out with uh, Sasha Banks. It's a lot more busy over there. A lot there. more busy. And okay. just, you know, let her do her thing. If she goes to WWE, let her do her thing on Raw. And that's the thing. I guess, Richard, let me ask you this. Is like, Melina coming back, do you want to see more of like a manager role like she was? originally with Eminem or do you want her to wrestle so therefore that's where I think decides which path does she go Raw or Smackdown because yeah I raw, love that question but see on Raw it'd be great because yeah because Asuka doesn't have like a main opponent right now which we'll get into what happened this past week's episode of Raw but it's like okay on Raw I, I think they're trying to find who can be Asuka's next big opponent to challenge but then on SmackDown, yeah, Bailey's very busy with Sasha, and she also got Nikki Cross. So there's a lot going on there in the title scene as far as opponents lined up already. But then again, do you put her back in more of a manager role? Because she's what forty one, and not, like she looks amazing. She yeah, we love she her. Does. <laughs> yeah, we loved her work in NWA Power, and that's the other thing. A lot of people were questioning. Well, wait, she was with NWA. Her contract quietly expired over the summer, so that's why she's more or less a free agent. At least that's what the reports are saying. So that's why she's able to sign away with someone else. So it's, um, but that's the thing. It's like, do you reunite her with Morrison and then do a new no. version of Eminem? But see, that's the thing. No. Her and Morrison, you know, for anyone who follows wrestling news from the last 10 years, we know 
her and Morrison do have a lot of history together. They dated and had a bad breakup, all that stuff. And I'm not going to go into the details. You can go online and look it up. But- and, and, and it looks like they put that behind them because they worked together at Lucha Underground. So briefly, but still, you know, I don't think you would – if you're on that bad of terms with someone, you don't work with them like that. And I mean, and Morrison, obviously, he's married now to Taya Valkyrie. They have a great marriage going on from what I've seen online. And so – Maybe she him needs and- to go. She needs to go to WWE so bad. Yeah, who she's Taya? been ready. Yeah, yeah, she's been ready for them for years. Yeah, I mean that's a, she would thrive on NXT or Raw. Her and Oscar. Yeah, no, her and Oscar would be great. So that's the thing with Melina, though. It's like, yeah, I don't know what her goals are. Does she want to wrestle? I mean, she wrestled a little bit in NWA Power, but she was more kind of like a manager of with Thunder she, Rosa. And, she and could Marty easily Bell. be. I was just going to say that she could be the next coming of Sherry Martel. Like, yeah. I, I, I downloaded software so I could screen record so I could post on my page because <laughs> of Molina's promo about how she was coming for Thunder Rosa. Cause I was like, Oh my God, that promo was just yeah. so damn good. Mm. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. she is, you know, you think of when you think of Molina, you think of how good of a worker she was, but like, out of nowhere, she's just this great talker now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I could I could easily see her doing, being the female equivalent of MVP. Okay, yeah, wrestling and talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so but, mm-hmm. but but you know like uh, yeah, uh, she could be in retribution. Well, that's it. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, so for me, it's like I I don't know. Like okay, Eminem was Mercury and Morrison, so I don't know. If they want to do an updated version, Eminem with Miz and Morrison, but I think they're fine on their own. Like I don't think they need her as a mouthpiece. No, Miz is a great talker anyway, so yep. it's not needed. No, yeah, those two have such natural because they're actual friends. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. they feed like, off what each they other. do on TV is not just two guys that are thrown together. Like no, these guys are best friends. Like that's that's the kind of chemistry you actually have with your friends. Yeah. And then let me ask you this though: so if like I think her re-signing would be great for the women's division because I think on Raw there's a lot of people. Actually, that reminds me. Like, where's uh, well, Bianca well, Belair been? And like, here, I, here's here's something for you. It just it, it beefs it, up the division. It looked like on Raw, Zelina Vega dumped Andrade and Garza Jr. Yeah. What if Molina takes them to the next level as their new manager? Yeah. Because it mm. looks like Zelina's finally going to get in the ring in WWE. And do some stuff. Yeah, yeah which yeah. is great. So, I mean, I wonder if Molina should be a good fit. Yeah, well, listen, I mean, like, WWE might be at the point where they're, even though they laid off a bunch of wrestlers earlier earlier this year, it looks like they are trying to re-sign some older veterans. And maybe they're here to come in and help put over the younger talent yeah. or, or be good, comp- fresh competition. So I can see well, Molina coming in. She is experienced former Diva <laughs> champion. But I mean, they'll probably just call it former women's champion. But she was a women's champion as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. With the, with the other title, she won the women's belt before the, and then she won the the divas, the divas, mm-hmm. the so butterfly I could, belt. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I could see her coming in and just be a worthy opponent for Oscar, um, and then maybe put over some of the younger talent that's coming over from NXT or or look at Peyton Royce. She's getting a singles push now. She can. I mean, for these younger people, yeah, I beat a former women's champion in Melina. So yes. Melina. Like that with Mickey James right now. Yeah, Melina could be Mickey James 2.0 in some way. So, uh, and wrestling does need those type of people on the roster that are veterans that can help put on great matches and help pass on, you know, pay it forward for the younger talent and put them over. So, I, I mean, I think Melina could be very valuable in many and ways. A lot of, and a, yeah, agreed. Cool. So, agreed. we'll wait and see. I mean, as far as if it's true or not, I mean, she's trying to downplay it, but we, it could easily be a swerve. I mean, at the time of this recording, she's downplaying it. I mean, we'll see. Hopefully, if anything happens on this week's, next week's uh, uh, WWE television. But uh, we're all for it. I mean, it's it's. I will admit, hearing that was a little bit of another dagger of like, oh, NWA lost another talent. Yeah, they, they've been losing a lot of people. I mean, that's the one thing this pandemic, I, I think, has really hurt the NWA the most as far as just the talent, their contracts expiring, and they're going on to other promotions. So. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see how NWA bounces back whenever they are able to do uh, uh, live shows again. So we shall wait and see. And uh, speaking of the NWA, though, one way that they've been able to 
kind of get some momentum going again. And this is something we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks now. So it was announced that the United Wrestling Network, along with partnering up with the NWA and was it Thunder Studios, Tommy? Is that who it was? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so they announced a new TV show called Primetime Light- Live. Lightning One. Lightning One. Lightning One. Not oh. Thunder One. I was thinking Thunder Rosa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Lightning you're right. One. So uh, they announced a new show, a weekly show called Primetime Live that was going to be available every Tuesday on pay-per-view, specifically on Fight TV. That's the easiest way to go about to watch it. So Primetime Live, it, it's, uh, like I said, a weekly uh, which I was surprised it was only 90 minutes show. It was a 90 minute show this week. So we, we've been talking about this off and on the last couple of weeks when the announcement came out. And this past Tuesday was the very first episode of Primetime Live. And uh, they had six matches announced. They added one during the course of the show. And uh, we won't necessarily go through all the cards, but uh, we'll give our initial takes from this show and we'll talk about the main event. Um, Tommy, what were your kind of initial takeaways from this episode of Primetime Live? The debut episode. Uh, just the, uh, the streaming service. It was just terrible. <laughs> that was, it was terrible. Yeah. So, um, uh, what Tommy's talking about there. So Tommy and I, we tried watching it live. So it was uh six o'clock our time. I bought the bundle package. You could buy four weeks for one low price. And so Tommy and I tune in live and the whole episode, it was having buffering issues or like we'll watch like a minute of the match and all of a sudden it would pause and freeze like there was one moment it froze on Hammerstone for like five minutes. Yeah, it was. We were having a lot of just uh, uh, streaming issues. Um, sure enough, later on, Dave Marquez, owner of the United Wrestling Network, tweeted out that these were issues because of Fight TV's app, not necessarily what they were doing. Uh, it was very unfortunate. <laughs> so it made our live time, uh, live watching experience a little, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, a bump in the road. So, mm-hmm. but, uh, Richard, you were the smart one. You watched it later at night when they had the show was done in the books, uploaded apparently a new master file. What was your takeaway from this show? I, I really liked half of it. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, I was just happy to see faces that I haven't seen the last couple months doing something new. Um, I thought the announcers were tremendous. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were really, really good. They really kept the energy. Because I don't know if there was people there or not. I wasn't looking that carefully because the, the announcers were doing such a good job. Yeah. Um, but I I enjoyed the show. I watched it about 11 o'clock our mm-hmm. time. Yeah. So uh, no streaming issues whatsoever then. Mm-hmm. Uh, I loved Aldous and Bennett. I thought uh, Camille and Heather Monroe was really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I want to see Heather Monroe somewhere. I know she's had an AEW appearance here or there. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, it was great to see Hammerstone, and I this is my first time ever seeing Chris Dickinson, and that guy's a star. Yeah, there's something about that guy. I mean, I get it; he's swearing and everything, and that's that's a cheap thing to do. But mm-hmm. at the same time, he's he's legit. He he has a good look too. Yeah, this this was so. What I enjoy about this show, one, is it's a mixture of like, uh, you know, veterans in the wrestling business and upcoming talent working together in some of these matchups or in these different matches booked on the card. So we get to see members of the NWA roster making an appearance, people who are in other promotions but have connections to uh, the United Wrestling Network and just uh, upcoming talent. That's been on their uh, championship wrestling from Hollywood show. So I like it's kind of like an all star show in many ways. And, and and like we were just talking about NWA, how the NWA we think has been one of the most affected by the pandemic. And obviously everything's been on a hiatus for them. This is a great way to kind of build up some new momentum for the NWA and their roster. This gives them a platform to go out there and perform. So it was very cool on the very first episode. We got to see the NWA World Heavyweight Champion Nick Aldis take on Mike Bennett in the main event. The real world champion. <laughs> real yes, world champion. Yes. But uh, so yeah, it was six matches announced. They added one during the course of the show. I was excited for the opening match. I also wanted to mention that I felt the tag match was a little bit too long and it was a bit of a waste of time, I thought. Yeah, yeah. So li- just a little. It, was, it wasn't terrible, but it was. I'm with you. It just felt like it dragged a tiny bit. But overall, the title match, the NWA title match between Aldis and Bennett was really good. It was enjoyable. And, um, you know, the presentation of it was really good. And it really told a good story in there. And it and it just made you – it was a believable as a contest 
as can it get. Yeah, it, like also just I mean the opening match it was great seeing Alex Hammerstone. We're all a huge fan of his from uh, obviously his current run in MLW, but he's also the current West Coast Pro Wrestling Champion out here in the Bay Area. So West Coast Pro Wrestling is one of the sponsors for Championship Wrestling from Hollywood and one of their syndicated shows out here in the Bay Area. So it was cool that they're able to bring in other promotions and their championships onto this show. And so Hammerstone was great seeing him in action. We haven't seen him in action in so long. So Since January. He had a great match. He won against EJ Sparks. Um, as you said, Camille, take on Heather Monroe. Camille, Tommy and I were like, she has like China, China vibes as far as just yes. a powerhouse yeah. in the ring. China right? vibes, totally. She's she's really enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. It's like so when she started with NWA, she's very much just like a strong manager presence for Nick Aldis, like an enforcer in many ways. Like mm-hmm. China. Yeah, yes. but then towards the end of NWA Power's run before the pandemic, she was starting to mix up in the ring a little bit. So mm-hmm. it's great that she's able to kind of – get that going again that momentum mm-hmm. i think she could be a great in-ring performer as well and heather mm-hmm. monroe who's very experienced i i think the two of them put on a very hard hitting match that was very entertaining to see well, i believe camille was trained by the dudleys she okay. she almost got signed with wwe don't know I don't know why she wasn't. She, you can uh, actually see her in the background on the Breaking Ground documentary. And didn't she date Braun Strowman for a bit? She, yes, she did. Yeah, now she's dating Tom Latimer. Yeah, yeah. Who's, who's a who's, Charlotte ex? Charlotte Flair's yep. ex. Man, they're, it's very insensuous that whole wrestling yes. scene. But I'm just saying. Um, uh, I, I remember like at one WrestleMania, Camille was there posing with a lot of wrestlers. So maybe Braun brought her back there at the time. So I don't know what, what her status is, you know, with Braun and, you know, how their relationship ended. Maybe is there any, you know, bad grapes there? I don't know, sour grapes, I should say. But nonetheless, I think for her to get more experience working with the NWA is a, definitely a smart route to go. Um, United television match championship match. Dan Jones taking on our boy Levi Shapiro. And I was thinking, okay, for a show like this, a debut show, there's gotta be a title change just to get some buzz going, people talking. And I was thinking, okay, I don't think uh, Nick Aldis was going to drop the title. I don't think Hammerstone was going to drop the title. If Hammerstone, you have to drop that title at an actual West Coast pro wrestling show here in the Bay Area. Yeah. So with that being said, I was like, this is a great opportunity for Levi Shapiro to get, pick up a win and get a title change. Big moment for Levi to celebrate. But uh, unfortunately, no, he, he lost here. Dan Joseph retained. A uh, great match, but I thought it was a little short. Yeah. I, I, I was kind of wishing it was a little bit longer. Yeah. And that was something I kind of noticed was they had seven matches and it was I thought it was going to be two hours long. And I was like, oh, okay, that's good for six matches going into it. But when I realized it was 90 minutes, I felt like that explains why some of these matches were a little more faster or a little bit shorter pace or, or shorter in length. So I was like, oh, so I kind of feel bad for some of them. Some of these people on the card who didn't get to have like a really long match. Uh, but yeah, the main event we saw. um uh, Nick Aldis take on Mike Bennett and uh, Mike Bennett's wife Maria Canales came out with him. Very cool seeing them. I mean, it's been a minute since we've seen him on uh, Monday Night Raw, so it was cool to see him make a return. Uh, but yeah, Richard, your thoughts on this main event? Just the two two uh, veterans going at it. It was very very good. Yeah, very very good. Uh, it was nice to see Aldis in a main event championship style match the way it was set up uh, and I, I i love the two tombstone pile drivers in the match <laughs> yeah yeah the brawl outside the ring was great it was just really good match yeah that's the thing it's just great seeing nick in a ring again even mike bennett i mean I, I think i mentioned this last week but mike bennett he's been doing a lot of interviews and his goal leaving wwe he, he wants to put on these big banger matches that he knows he has in him that he hasn't had didn't have the uh, opportunity to do so in WWE. So he is very much willing to go to other promotions and put on these stellar, longer form matches. And I hope he could do that, accomplish that. Because he says you're only young once. You're only in your prime once. So he wants to leave behind a great body of work. So I, that's why I'm, I'm definitely rooting for him uh, long term as far as uh, uh, what he could do in the ring next. Did you get Did you get the sense when they actually were face-to-face finally? I, I, this is no slight on him. Yeah, but, uh, 
I just don't see him being a world champion. Like he he puts up a good fight. Yeah. He can be the guy that comes close, but I I see his ceiling as kind of if he's going to stick with the NWA being that North American or the TV champ. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that because mm-hmm. I I thought he put up a great fight with all this it just I'm just looking at him like, God, he's just, he's smaller than I remember. Like a Tully Blanchard. Yeah, I mean, like, I could see, like, I mean, that's the thing. In pro wrestling, not everyone has, quote, the it factor. Yeah, that's been a yeah. big discussion on this show. Mike yeah. Bennett, he has a lot of great attributes to him, but he doesn't have maybe the total package. But nonetless. Yeah, he's not Lex Luger. At all. <laughs> exactly. So. And plus the poor editing on that show. They oh. they missed Mike Bennett's crossbody on all this outside the ring. Um, yes, that's the thing. Tom and I were rewatching, and there was like moments of like these high spots, and the camera was away filming like Maria or something else going on. I was like, "You're missing like key moments in the matchup." So mm-hmm. hopefully, hey, the- hey, hey, if the camera's on Maria, they didn't miss shit. <laughs> Thank you. Well then, I can't complain. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. you she did go. look. She looked great that night. Yes, Ooh. she did. Um, but and and it was just nice seeing the two of them come out together, looking in love, all that stuff. No, uh, cock, what, cocking, uh, uh, cocking, cocking. What, what they're trying to do on Raw? Oh, <laughs> that 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 storyline. Yeah. But anyway, that, that um, storyline had legs for me. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Um, uh, uh, but the match itself, it was great. I mean, you could definitely see these are two guys who are veterans who know what they're doing. And so uh, you could see like, just as far as the movement, uh, the athleticism, the timing, the speed, you could see these, no one that they're main eventing the show. So you can definitely see like, it's always great. Like these type of shows where you can see people of different places in their career and experience level. And these two guys, I mean, it's, it, they were awesome watching them go that- at it. That was a show that needed that match. Yes, because the ki- yeah. had, had they not had that match, I don't know if I would be as excited to see the next one. Because I, like you, bought the bundle. Yeah. So uh, that match was just like, yeah, this that match alone was worth whatever I paid for that episode. So, and that's the thing. It, it's uh, I think they're like seven ninety nine, but if you buy all four, it was like twenty four bucks. So it's like. I think buy three, get one free type of thing situation. But uh, uh, I was just going to say also uh, a little bit of a blooper towards the end. We, Tommy and I noticed uh, when Bennett was going to grab the title and hit all this, the globe fell off the front of it, mm-hmm. the front plate. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hopefully they fixed it. Uh, but no, overall, I love the presentation. I love it was a simple setup in this studio with the ramp. What I liked about it was the ring and there was the pennants in the background yeah, right there. Yeah. It looked like like the set of like Mid South back in exactly. the day. Exactly. So it's just a good throwback studio setup vibe in there. I love that. And then the next week, yeah, Thunder Rose is being advertised defending the NWA women's championship. Our boy Carl Frederick, he's gonna be on the show. So Eli Drake. New- Eli Drake. Oh yeah, Eli Drake did a promo. Eric Watts. Yeah. yeah. So that's next, gonna be fun. Yeah. So Tuesday, next episode of uh, of uh, Primetime Live is looking great. And so yeah, they're, they're definitely trying to stack the cards with all these different all star lineups. And the Eli Drake cut cut a good promo th- this past week. <laughs> Tommy Richard, I don't know. If, did you see Tommy's comparison of Eli Drake's shirt? I tweeted <laughs> that the sh- I don't know if you saw his shirt, but I kind of like compared the pictures side by side, side by side. His shirt, the the way it was written, it looks like the old the the logo from the famous soap opera, The Young and the Restless. <laughs> Just the curse of writing. I don't even know what that looks like. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, follow Tommy on Twitter, Twitter and you'll see the tweet. <laughs> Iron Fist nineteen eighty two. Check it out there. Scroll down. <laughs> and actually, I got a retweet from Eli Drake. And oh, he, he did. Yes, he actually quoted my tweet and with an emoji like. I don't know. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So that was cool. Very that was cool. Fun. So I did not know that. So, mm-hmm. um, oh my but, God. <laughs> but anyway, listen, here's the other thing too, with the streaming issues, I saw a lot of people online complaining. It's like, Oh, this is how it's going to be every week. Then I'm, I'm, I'm I, I feel like an idiot buying the bundle package or I'm not going to tune in next week. No, listen, people for a first show, there's going to be some mistakes. I'm sure they f- learn from their mistakes and their errors. It's going to be corrected. And like we talked about before, your eight bucks or twenty four bucks if you bought the bundle, the twenty four bucks goes a long way there compared to like the other bigger promotion. So every dollar that you can help contribute to this show will go a long way to keep it going for a long period of time. So 
if anything, support them. That that's yeah, the big thing. Maybe maybe just watch it uh, two hours later. Yeah, after, you'll have to watch it right as it's on. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Be like Richard. Don't be, be like, like Richard. Us. Be smart. Yeah, what, would, what would Richard do? <laughs> yeah. What would Richard do? That's, we should make T-shirts. What would Richard He's, do? He'd, he'd have some ice cream and watch The Sopranos for a bit. There you go. <laughs> and photo bomb bands at festivals. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, Inside joke. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, the next episode of Primetime Live. So please buy it on Fight TV and watch it. And yeah, we'll look forward to talking more about it. Mm-hmm. All right, let's jump on over to uh, this week in WWE TV. Uh, Monday Night Raw. Wow, pretty stacked show as far as mm-hmm. a lot of stuff going on. I'm just looking at the notes here of all the different segments. A lot going on. But we'll go through the highlights of it all. Um, Richard, yeah, just your initial thoughts on this week's episode i thought it was very good <laughs> um i know there's some people bitching and complaining about this or that but um man the hurt business just that i look forward to, i haven't looked forward to seeing someone or something in quite a while and like i, I didn't even think that until like you have something that like is doing it to you yeah so it, it, it's like I don't know. The hurt business for me feels like when you first start dating a girl or, or a girl starts dating a guy and it's like you, you can't wait to see them the next time. And it's just like, oh, man, they're doing it. And then like then we get it at the end of the show. And it's like you get more than you want because how cool was that at the end of the show when they all pop back out in suits and they're like, oh, shit, they're going to throw down with retribution. Which... Like I was just like. This is too much. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, the, <laughs> the third hour I really enjoyed. I will admit, like, there's parts of the show where I feel like it's copy and paste. Like, we're kind of seeing the same matchups and and different combinations of the same people over and over. So that's my one little issue. I'm getting a little bit bored of it all. But that last hour, and I know we're jumping ahead right to, kind of towards the end. Like, I don't know about you, but her business in that one segment, I think they put themselves over as baby faces now. Yeah. Like, I know they're trying to be heels here and, like, take yeah. out Apollo Crews and Ricochet, but the fact they're defending WWE and came well, out looking so cool. Yeah. And and as soon as Cedric Alexander joined, like, the online attitude, the internet wrestling community was just, like, universally positive towards the group now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, before it was just another thing on the show. And now all of a sudden it's like, no, this is this is what we've wanted. Like, this is the missing piece to the puzzle here. And that's the thing. And this is could be an ongoing topic. I'll put this out there to all the clicksters. Like, who is your I, actually I did put it on social media. Who is your MVP of the pandemic era in pro wrestling as far as WWE? MVP, MVP, and, and, MVP. I mean, I, I, I my, <laughs> me personally, I love Asuka. I think Asuka, especially with the early shows at the Performance Center, her very animated personality was great, especially on commentary in the ring. But yeah, in more, more recent time, yeah, it's definitely MVP because you look at what he's done since his return. He's gotten uh, uh, Cedric Alexander now, you know, a push. Bobby Lashley's now being booked as a badass and not some stupid storyline with Lana wedding. That was a good storyline. <laughs> and then Sheldon Benjamin is doing stuff again. He was off TV for the longest time. Yeah. So like this, the Hurt Business are all guys that we've been wanting to see thrive and get a proper push. And now they're being booked as legit badasses. So I know it's supposed to be heels here, but I, I think everyone loves them now. My MVP yeah. is Scrap Iron Adam Pierce. Yes, Adam Pierce. Adam, <laughs> That's my MVP. As the authority figure for Raw and SmackDown, mm-hmm. former NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. <laughs> but uh, no, but, but uh, I, like I said, we'll, we'll touch more on the 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 ending there as far as uh, the hurt business and uh, retribution. But uh, real quick, I just kind of want to touch uh, a few things. So we saw Drew McIntyre cut out a uh, promo talking about Keith Lee. Adam Pierce came out and says. Uh, if Keith Lee beats you tonight and Randy Orton cannot wrestle at Clash of Champions, Keith Lee will then take you on instead. So pretty much saying mm. if Keith Lee wins tonight, he becomes the new alternate number one contender for the yeah. WWE Championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw Street Profits defeat uh, the SmackDown champions, Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. That was a good match. <laughs> that was a good match. There was a moment where Cesaro lifted Montez Ford up and gave him one of those uppercuts. Mm. And the look on Montez's face was like, you know, he, he kind of does that thing where he gets hit real hard and his eyes go real yeah. wide. He did that. And then his eyes just shut real hard. Like, oh, that was stiff. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it, it, it's no, it was great seeing kind of like a little, this all star slash uh, uh, they were calling it, uh, the 
uh, uh, brand the brand invitational. So now they're saying like once every three months, someone can appear on another show. Low so, key, like a super show. Yeah. So we're, we're getting elements of SmackDown coming over. Um, and then yeah, later on, we saw Cedric Alexander take on Ricochet. Ricochet, dude, he took that, uh, what was it the knees to the back at the very end, went flying in the air. But Cedric Alexander got a win. And like, dude, like he. He uh, before the match he explained himself and it's like, listen, I'm tired of getting my ass kicked by the hurt business. I'm going home beat up, can't play with my kids, all that stuff. So he's like, it pretty much sums up. It's like if you can't beat them, join them mentality. So he yeah, he set it up so well though because I watched it twice because I showed my uh, the guy who does our theme song, yeah, William. <laughs> I showed um, him the promo because like he set it up. To where it's like, I'm, look, how many times have I taken a beating for you during one of your title matches from these guys? And they gave me the opportunity. It's like, yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So it, 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 that was a great match. And I think Cedric, he's going to go on a roll right now. I, I, and that's great for him. And listen, we said it here first on the show. Her business has a lot of similarities to Evolution. And then sure enough, within the last week, a lot of people are doing side-by-side photos of the Her business in suits. Evolution in suits. And, you know, Cedric Alexander is getting a, a great spot in all this. So this has been a great uh, opportunity for Cedric to th- thrive here. Uh, we saw Retribution cut a promo. Um, long story short, they referenced that they were our former performance center people. So Richard, I mean, I think a lot of people are speculating. Obviously, these are people probably from NXT coming over. I mean, you could tell, obviously, that was Dominic Dijakovic talking, Mia Yim. Uh, I, I mean, I can't confirm any of that. <laughs> Mercedes Martinez. Mm-hmm. I think the other guy to the far left on the screen was Shane Thorne, and the guy in the back, I think, was probably Dio Madden. So, <laughs> And then more bodies came in at the end. So, well, It was definitely Dio Madden if you stayed to the end of the show when everyone was brawling, because you could see the dreads hanging out. The- <laughs> yeah, I saw that. So, uh, they got a promo, and that was the main thing. You know, uh, The male voice clearly said performance center, so a lot of people speculate. Okay, obviously that's NXT stuff. So okay, that's fine. I could see Mia Yim's eyes through that mask. That was so obvious. That's I so feel obvious. so bad. It's like a dead giveaway. It's like it's jumping head to the end again. It's like his be- Keith Lee's best friend and girlfriend are part of the team beating him up. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Or How- what, what if Keith Lee's the leader? But he took a beating. On yeah. It. Do you remember when Bully? Oh was, yeah, uh, Aces and Eights. Uh, he took he took beatings from the Aces and Eights. And he explained it when they revealed everything because he had to take that beating for the betterment of the group later on so they wouldn't suspect it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) We talked about before we recorded recycled storyline. I know, I know. We'll let it be. (laughs) So I'm just – and Keith Lee, there was a rumor that Vince wants him as a monster heel. I, I think this is building towards Survivor Series. Okay. Team WWE versus Retribution. Or Team, Team Raw. Raw. Oh, Raw. Yeah, versus which I would love because I just don't like the, the brand supremacy bullshit. Yeah, all it is is just exhibition matches with nothing on the yeah, line. Yeah, and there, there's been some really good... Like, last year's Survivor Series was probably my favorite pay-per-view of last like, year. But, like, I just... I don't care. I don't... I hate the... Yeah. The Raw guys were all red and the SmackDown guys were all blue. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, ultimately, it's just an, it's an it's exhibition. It's like an all star game. Yeah, it's an all star game. We're a wristband. Yeah, it's an exhibition. There's nothing major on the line. Like, it would be one thing if, like, at the end of the night, if a brand, if one of the brands had, whoever had more wins, there's some sort of stipulation like, like you are the first entrant in the, or excuse me, the last entrant in the Royal Rumble or something like some sort of stake at the, yeah. uh, but uh, you know, but these Survivor Series, yeah, when it's just brand supremacy, yeah, bragging rights, like who cares? Like, like at the, this well, guy forgot and, and about they, last year again. They they did the best with it because uh, with NXT Raw, involved, Raw and yeah, because NXT was involved and Raw was worried about SmackDown. SmackDown was worried about Raw. Meanwhile, NXT didn't even announce who was in their men's elimination match and kept it a surprise. And yeah. then they won the total at the end of the night. So Walter was wrong, though. He should not have been like was the first or second eliminated. First. He, should, he should have dominated that one. Still injustice. 
he should be part of Retribution too. Keith Lee looked good though. He, oh yeah, that's when Vince fell in love with him that night. So, mm-hmm. uh, but the main event was good, you know, between Keith Lee and uh, McIntyre. Yeah. Also, but real quick, uh, probably the match that got a lot of people talking was the Raw Women's Championship match: Oscar taking on Mickey James, and. I think by now everyone knows what happened if you watch the show. Kind of a little bit of a botch finish. Uh, the ref ended the match early when it looked like Mickey James was in the Oscar lock, but didn't necessarily tap out right away. And so a lot of people were like, uh, that was it kind of It looked like sudden. she was going for a pin. Yeah. Mickey. Mickey. Yeah, that's the thing. So there's been a lot of speculation. And then Mickey James, I think, did an interview to kind of clarify initially that night a lot of people were saying there was one point where mickey was in the uh, oscar lock she rolled over and she put her hand down but she tapped the mat multiple times as if she was trying to get balance but i can see based on this one replay I saw this one angle a ref could easily interpret that as someone tapping out but she was more like tapping the mat to kind of get her balance it looked like but i saw what mickey said she she basically said that <laughs> She gave a look, you know, her eyes went all buggy, yes. and the referee thought she was concussed, so he called the match. Yeah, and so, and, so and, and that just goes to how good of a performer Mickey James is, but at the same time, I would say Mickey James is owed a rematch. Exactly. So, yeah, that's the thing. It's like you could tell when the ref stopped it, she's in the Oscar lock, but her eyes bulge out like yeah, WTF. I mean, if, when, when I watched it, uh, you could tell too, like the way she rolled. Because she was rolling with her like her back to Oscar's body and we're trying to roll on top of Oscar. Yeah. And you could see her eyes just kinda like bulge and she's looking straight at the referee. And to mm-hmm. me that I mean that that semi looked like a sign to me. So you know, they have such a strict concussion policy in mm-hmm. WWE, you gotta imagine like, oh my God, what's wrong? Like did did she hit a windpipe or something even? Like you yeah. don't know. So to the ref's defense he stopped it thinking she was legit hurt. But then Mickey James clarified, you know, I'm fine. And just the ref just, you know, uh, uh, jumped the gun too quick to call it. So if anything, kudos to Mickey James. She's that good at her job as far as selling an injury. But uh, so it's unfortunate. It kind of had that abrupt finish and obviously just creates a lot of unnecessary drama, especially on social media. But you're right, Richard. I, I-, I think maybe she deserve a rematch. And a lot of people were upset because they think that might be her last opportunity ever for the championship which I doesn't make sense like give her another opportunity down the road I mean yeah I, a- I think this is an opportunity this might even be a blessing for her in disguise because now she can she can come out and cut a promo on the referee she's still in the limelight but she could have just lost and you know they move on to the next person but now yeah. she she I mean they have to address it it made such buzz this week and we saw Selena uh, Vega also come out to the ring, so it looks like she's kind of doing her own thing now, splitting up from Andrade and Angel Garza, tired of them uh, constantly bickering fighting. between the two. Yeah, fighting. Uh, so it looks like, yeah, she's going to maybe jump into the squared circle and take on Asuka, but maybe Mickey James can get involved, and then Mickey James and Asuka can, um, uh, excuse me, Mickey James and Selena Vega can go at it. Winner takes on Asuka down the road again. So. You know, Mickey James, there's a lot did more you opportunities. Notice, did you notice with Andrade and Garza that when they got into their scuffle, it looked like they were trying to aggressively hug one another? <laughs> yes. Like, I mean, it didn't look like they were throwing fists. It was just kind of like, come here. Come here. Come here. I love you, man. <laughs> love you. Come here. God, I love you. I haven't yeah. seen you in so long in social I mean, distancing. I, I, don't speak, I don't speak Spanish, but I, <laughs> I you know, well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Great Jerry Jared impression. <laughs> oh my god! Um, also, next up, we saw Bobby Lashley taking on uh, one half of the Viking Raiders, Eric. Um, this was obviously kind of a continuation of their match from last week. Um, Bobby Lashley got the win here, but I, I, I think for anyone who hasn't heard yet, his tag team partner, it, Ivar. We we announced last week that he got hurt in the match. He threw up the X sign, and uh, now it's being reported he's having surgery on his neck, and it's going to be out for probably about a year. So, oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So it came out. So Ivar had surgery on his neck. And apparently, he's had some neck issues, but he kept holding off on it. Unfortunately, that match last week was the four on four match um, when he j- did the uh, suicide dive outside well, of the ring. 
I mean, to be fair, it's wrestling. We'll see him in eight months. <laughs> yes, he'll be Super Cena. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but no, unfortunately, yeah, he has neck surgery, and I mean, the early reports are it's going to be one full year to recover. Um, super sad. I mean, just you don't want to see anyone out that long, especially with the neck. That's such a serious body issue to take care of. And I mean, for me, a couple things. One, in wrestling, they got to do less suicide dives. I think they overdo it way too much, especially guys that size. Like when everyone does it, it's not as special anymore. Like Undertaker or some of the other guys who do it like once or twice a handful times a year, it was a big deal. Like they're going deep in their arsenal to take out their opponent. But every match, you look at Big E, Big E does suicide dives every match. And so I always get cringe when someone that big is doing it. It's just so anyway, Ivar, we wish you a speedy recovery. And it just sucks because now Viking Raiders are not going to be a thing for a long time. And with Eric, though, like, what does he do? Kind of similar with Jay Uso's right now. Like, you know, when you're a tag team and your partner is out for a long period of time, what do you do? Do you become a singles competitor? Do you just sit at home waiting? I, well, if he sits at home, his wife is pregnant, so he can just be home for his wife. True, true. But, so, but Eric, you I know... I don't think they're going to let them, them go based off of this. Yeah. Well, Eric, you know, he did stuff on Raw Underground, so maybe he can do yeah. go back to that. Or maybe just, yeah, maybe a slight little repackage and he, give him a singles I mean, run. Both of them were singles wrestlers before they were a tag team. Yeah. And yeah, they yeah. were both decent singles wrestlers. So it's I, I think he, he's, he's going to be fine. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, we'll wait and see how this plays out. Uh, real quick, another big match of the night was a steel cage match between Seth Rollins and Dominic Mysterio. Great hard hitting match. I mean, Dominic got like what is it six matches total in his career so far? He keeps getting better and better. I will admit, I kind of hope this is the end of the rivalry. I think we've seen plenty of matches between Seth, Murphy, Dominic, Rey Mysterio combinations. Let this be done with now and move on. But Dominic still impressed, was amazing. Uh, even though he lost to Seth Rollins, still a great performance out of his part. But the big thing was at the very end, you know, Seth <laughs> beats up Buddy Murphy because Buddy Murphy came out and accidentally hit him with a steel cage door and he retaliated by giving him the, uh, by uh, doing it back at him. Um, Buddy Murphy's laying on the ground and Ray's daughter, Dominic's sister, comes over and almost like very sympathetically reaches down, caresses his bicep, and, like, checks on him before they all go back in the ring to check on Dominic. I don't know, Richard, what do you think that's uh, symbolizing right there? I think it's planting seeds okay. uh, for something. What? We don't know. Yeah. Um, I do think, you know, there there is some talk, because I think people do recognize how good Dominic actually is, but there is talk that it's because of how who he's in the ring with. Yeah. And I'll say this. Uh, yes, that is part of it. But at the same time of everything that Seth Rollins has been doing with this gimmick, yeah. Dominic's the only one that's made it relevant. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... So he's get, they're getting something out of it as well in a big way. Well, definitely. I mean, before no one cared. And now, now it's like, oh, man, Dominic's in a match. And it's like, oh, and it's with, with Seth Rollins in a cage. And, I mean... Yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, Seth is one of the greats of this generation, a Grand Slam champion, future Hall of Famer, all that stuff. So Dominic is in the ring with one of the best right now to help him get his career going. Uh, But yeah, I wonder what's going to happen is because we were speculating like, oh, I wonder if uh, Rey Mysterio's daughter has any interest in wrestling. And listen, WWE has arguably the best women's division out there. So if she can do something, yeah, maybe she can become a WWE superstar and work in the women's division. Did we figure out how old she is? Is she I 17, she, 18? No, she's, I think, early 20s. Okay. Because Dominic is Asking what... Asking for a friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, because I think on Instagram, she was, like, posting photos with alcohol and stuff, so I... Well, that's a sin. <laughs> so, um, the Messiah... Uh, the Messiah needs... Uh, uh, the uh correct her on that but anyway i think we're gonna wind up seeing i think we we might have a couple more weeks of the mysterios with this and i think we are gonna we're getting to murphy and rollins at some point yeah Yeah. okay so and that's where it's gonna splinter off and dominic's gonna have to find something else to do probably samoa joe i'm guessing yeah i mean that's the thing it's like does dominic does he stay on raw or does he go to nxt or 
I, I'm, I, I, I haven't seen him do anything embarrassing yet. So I mean, if Vince, if Vince gave him that big hug after SummerSlam, he, so. he got the golden ticket. If if he can keep this up, like I know. Mm-hmm. You see that one meme of like it was like an escalator, and it's like Indies uh, or wrestling school Indies NXT. WWE and like it's a photo of Dominic just taking one giant step over all that and going to the top. Oh god. So it's like saying he skipped the normal path most wrestlers go to get to like Monday Night Raw. <laughs> I mean Dominic the last two or three years, like I told you this, like he trained yeah. with Conan, he trained with uh Luchadors, he trained with Lance Storm, trained with the Dudleys, like he went everywhere. So it's like he's got that he knows what to do in there. And it's, yeah. I mean, it's damn impressive. And I'm someone so, you've never seen before. I'm so happy he took the hoodie off his outfit. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so much better without that hoodie on. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I, I mean, I, I forgot who it was. Someone on Twitter said, how great would it be if it was revealed that Ray's daughter has been trained this whole time as well and it's a surprise that she can go out there and perform just like Dominic like how cool of a surprise but I think we would have seen it on social media because Dominic when he's been working out that was posted within the last year well, and he was posting it though yeah so maybe yeah she could be a secret weapon but I know we were talking off the air there I don't realize I love Star Wars but I don't read any of the books but I remember my cousin told me a long time ago there was a great story Han and Leia had twins, and um, was it twin boys or, or boy and a girl? I'm not quite sure, but one went to the dark side, one went to the good side to be a Jedi, and so it was like siblings going after. So I wonder, Dominic is going to stay good, and maybe the daughter, the fact that she touched Buddy Murphy, like she's drawn to like Seth's uh, 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 gimmick or his whole aura, and like maybe she wants to go to the dark side of the Monday Night Messiah. So I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Like there might be a Star Wars connection type thing there. Storytelling wise. I had a piece of news. I forgot at the the beginning of the show. What's that? Uh, Did you see that Ronda Rousey's training in the ring again? Did she mention she wants another match or something? She she was in the ring with uh, Piper's daughter. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. I did not see that. I know Piper's daughter. She was, was it? Wow. She's women, on WoW. Yeah, Women yeah. of Wrestling. I remember she was doing interviews a couple years ago. I didn't do it at the time, but... Uh, Fool. I, I could probably get her... I mean, she's probably easy to get again well, right now. Didn't wow. Piper's son has uh, trained in MMA or fought in MMA or... Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Colt did some, some MMA stuff, but I, I don't I'm, think he's doing that anymore. Yeah. Man. That would... Well, he should go into wrestling, too. Can he talk like his dad? No, I don't no, know. No one can. <laughs> no one can. No one. I know. He's one of a kind. <laughs> Give him a beer bottle or something. <laughs> Hit him on the head. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, no, I mean, if Ronda can come back at some point, I mean, it would be tremendous uh, for WWE. But, uh, 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 but yeah, we'll see. Like, going back to the Seth Rollins, we'll see how this plays out. But, yeah, ultimately, I think it's going to be Seth versus Murphy at some point, as you mentioned. Uh, Raw Underground again this week. Uh, we saw Titus O'Neil demanding to get inside there, and he goes in there, he starts kicking ass, and he gets beat up by, was it Braun Strowman? Mm-hmm. Braun Strowman, yeah, makes an appearance and wants to fight. I mean, he's was former Universal Champion recently. He was on SmackDown. Now he's on Raw. And then the announcers, Michael Cole, who's filling in once again for uh, Tom, uh, Phillips. Tom Phillips, announced uh, anyone from Raw or SmackDown can appear on Raw Underground. So, hence why Braun Strowman's there. And I guess this is Braun's new thing for the time being, since it looks like he uh, is not... <laughs> they have no uh, storylines for him on SmackDown. So, uh, he went out there kicked ass. And then at the very end, we saw him and... Uh, Who's the other tall guy? Dabo. Um, da- Dabo Keda. Yeah. Thank you. They uh, stared each other down eye to eye and Shane jumped in there. Wait, 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 wait. Save whoa, this for whoa, next, whoa. Week. Yeah. next week. Next week. Next yeah. week. Yep. <laughs> Who do you think is going to win? That's tough because I don't know how hard they're going to push this Dabo Keda. I could see him winning or or we could just see Braun maul him. So, the monster. Uh, I'll go. <laughs> I'll go with Braun. Okay. All right. I'll go Daba, but, but I'm going but by not not an easy win. I mean, Braun should win. I mean, because he is the monster, and like he, he should. But we, I mean, I just don't know what to expect with this the other guy. So I've and, seen uh, him in one or two things ever. And real so quick, I'm on that Evolve show, and I saw him in the Greatest Royal Rumble. Yeah, and also real quick, I mean, uh, Richard, you were telling me off the air. Uh, Shane McMahon did a great interview with Michael. Gr- 
Yeah, my, wait, yo, Corey, Corey Graves. Graves. I was saying Michael, Michael Graves. Michael Graves is the misfits. Misfit singer, sorry. <laughs> He's gone crazy now. God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Anyway, that's a whole music entertainment so news. That's another podcast. <laughs> yes. Um, but uh, he was on Corey Graves' podcast, right, explaining the whole Raw Underground concept. Yeah, he, he basically, he went on and, and he came up with the concept. Um, the concept basically is that, you know, get guys getting used that you're not seeing on TV but are there. You know, like, show them off. Maybe show a different side of them like we saw with Titus O'Neil, which I think is, is tremendous because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a street fight. It's supposed to be gritty even though it's not. But, like, you still get this. Like, we never saw this side of Titus O'Neil, even when yeah. he was pissed off in the ring. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, my God, that guy is a badass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we saw Eric from the Viking Raiders in there. And I mean, there's some people like like Shayna Baszler that, you know, you just know is like a badass, you mm-hmm. know, but you get some of these kind of scenarios that are, are just supposed to be quick entertainment. You, I mean, I'd rather have this than a backstage segment where they're not looking at the camera or even acknowledge that the camera's there. So. Yeah. I'll take it. It's action. So it, it, it's it's so this is Shane's way of giving these guys something to do in the meantime, yeah. and yeah. and like you know, listen, I like as much as I criticize well, it's, it, it's something to give them to, something to, to do, and it's also so you can see a different side of them because you can see Dolph Ziggler trying to steal someone's girl on one show, lose a match, and then go be pissed off about losing the girl and losing the match, and then he can go fight someone and win. Which, by the way, I, I just realized this. Uh, one, Dolph on commentary for the first half of the show. Oh, yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good job. Uh, I've, I've got something like that for SmackDown, too. Okay. But, and then uh, uh, but think about it. Mandy Rose is on Raw as well. And Dolph is there. And they had the, you know, before Otis or the initial love triangle. So, Do you think Tom Phillips has uh, the Rona? Dude, I, I, the fact that he's missed multiple weeks now. I, I mean, this well, is just speculation. If he's back this week, then I think he does. I mean, it's just speculation. You're, yeah, you're supposed to be home for what, fourteen days? Fourteen days. So, this is well, all allegedly. Weeks. We're just speculating. That nothing's been confirmed. So, uh, I don't know, man. We'll see. Yeah, I'm curious to see if Michael Cole's back for uh, another week or not. But, uh, uh, and then yeah, Samoa Joe wasn't there, so it was uh, Byron, Michael Cole, Dolph Ziggler for like the first half, and then MVP the second half. And then it makes sense. I was like, where where Dolph go? But he was on. Raw Underground again, so um, MVP was great too. I like how MVP. What was great about him? Like every time Cole would kind of go through his his generic catchphrases or things he would say about, during the match, and MVP would question him. It's like, wait, why would why would he do that? Like MVP was just calling Michael Cole out on everything he was saying in some way. In some, I don't have any specifics off the top of my head. I should have wrote them down. But there was just a couple little things where Michael Cole's like, oh, my God, he's going to go for this move. And MVP's like, why? He should not go for it. He should go for this and that. So I just enjoyed that aspect of it. Do you think that – because you've had, you've had Drew McIntyre on here. Yes. Do you think that the WWE gets criticized too harshly for in-ring promos? And the reason I ask is because it feels like whenever they have someone on color commentary, even if it's a special just for this match – it feels like they're not being coached, and it, it feels good. Well, I just I thought MVP. Okay, as far as criticizing in the ring well, promo, here, here, yes, here, absolutely, because they're here, saying they're too scripted. Here, Oscar, hilarious. We don't know what she's saying. Yeah, uh, I thought Alexa Bliss was. Look, she's so talented. I think she's easily could be the next lead female announcer mm-hmm. on commentary. Like okay. she, she was just really great. Okay. Uh, MVP, Dolph Ziggler, Samoa Joe, like, I mean, Samoa Joe comes out there and steals a microphone anyway, but Dolph Ziggler, like to me, he's not a good promo guy. He can do a promo, but he's not a good promo guy. Yeah. But when he's doing commentary, it's like, man, he's really good. Like I'm into this. Well, like I see him do stand up, and his stand up is not amazing. It, it's, it's solid, but he is comfortable on the microphone because he's mm-hmm. used to it in front of an arena full of people. So I think, you know, that's why he, he does also a good job on commentary. He is a good speaker. I think some people it's hard when you're scripted and you know, you got fall all well, these. He does bull- the same thing. It's, it's the same promo. It's the night in night out. Yeah. It's, oh God. Yeah. But you know, you, when you're scripted, I think there's a lot of pressure to remember your next line and not screw up. 
versus just maybe saying from speaking from the heart in that sense. But yeah, so in commentary, I don't know how much is being fed in their ears versus maybe they're just told go out there and have fun. I don't know. I I, I really. Yeah. But uh, no, but anyway, I, I just I enjoyed both of them, MVP and Dolph on commentary this week. Um, and then uh, I was just going to say we saw Drew McIntyre, Keith Lee. They get into a little bra on the back because they're both just getting mad at each other. Keith Lee keeps calling out Drew for interfering in his matches and whatnot. Uh, later on, we see Kevin Owens defeat Aleister Black. Aleister Black coming out with some uh, shiny new pants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which... I don't know. I'm kind of worried. Like, okay, are, are, are these like a one time thing? Is this a new outfit? Did he forget his other outfit? And he just had to quickly wear this thing. I think it's a good look for him. Well, and there's also now rumors that Vince is losing hope on Andrade and Alistair Black. And so people are worried that Andrade and Alistair Black are not going to get any pushes anytime soon. So Alistair Black lost here to Kevin Owens. Andrade lost Selena Vega and. So, I don't know. These, are, of course, this is going back to the Molina discussion earlier. These are all dirt sheet news rumors. We don't know what's tr- true and whatnot. But anyway, we'll see what happens next for Alistair Black. <laughs> what's next for him? Look, Alistair Black as a character is not very exciting at all. Like no matter what he's done in NXT or the main roster, it's his in ring that really, really stands out. It's just the yeah. problem is when you're on Raw or SmackDown. That doesn't fly like it does in NXT. And that's the thing. He was much better in NXT. He was a lot more exciting. They just knew how to handle him better, I guess, on Raw or SmackDown or Raw specifically. I I could see them throw a bone to Andrade a little bit better because he's had a manager and and a a mouthpiece. But uh, I I mean, I think maybe Alistair put him with Zelina, his wife. I mean, it's his real wife. Yeah, they they clearly have chemistry. Then let her speak for him, and she can have a completely different look. She could go the black death metal look, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then you can put Molina with Andrade and Garza if that's yeah. the case. Yeah. But like I, I mean, he's just he, to me, he doesn't do it for me. Like I love his in ring stuff, but like he's boring when he tries to do it on his own. And it's not because it's not something he doesn't believe in. It's just, it's kind of like Dolph Ziggler. He just feels like the same stuff is being said out of his mouth. Yeah. Well, I, I wonder if that's a problem of creative, not knowing how to handle him better. Um, how, but how do you, because like he wasn't, he wasn't good well, on the mic in NXT. Well, I thought he was going to be the second coming of like the next undertaker. As far as this, not necessarily mythical because this is okay. tw- it's 2020, you know. But who did Undertaker have with him for the first seven years of his career? Paul Bear. Bingo. So put a mouthpiece on him yeah. with him. So yeah. he's comfortable. Yeah, but but like I think as far as just the dark, edgy persona is what I'm getting as far as like another form of like at the Undertaker. Um, I always be- thought his promos kind of reminded me a little like Jake Roberts, too. Who, Alistair Black? A little bit. Well, as far as he was trying to come off more um, cynical. or, yeah. or and he did, didn't have to yell, you know, during his promos, you know. I mean, definitely NXT was a lot better. I, I think Raw has been a bumpy start because they yeah. put him in that broom closet. And for his work many... rate was tremendous in NXT. I think. Yeah. No, I mean, we want to see Alistair Black do well. It's just, I think it's just been a lot of bumps in the road. So, I don't know. We'll see how this plays out. Uh, real quick, we saw the Riot Squad defeat Natty and Lana. Uh, the the women's champions, uh, um, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax were ringside. They came out and beat up Natty and Lana, put Lana through the table to Samoan. Uh, Good. So it was a Samoan drop. Uh, yes. That was awesome. And then the, the main event, we saw Drew McIntyre take on Keith Lee. And unfortunately, it just came to a big halt because Retribution came out to attack him. Yeah. And going back to what we talked about at the beginning of this review, as far as her business came out because uh, going back, Earth, uh, Adam Pierce talked to them early in the show and said, and they offered their services to protect WWE or Monday Night Raw. Of course, not for uh, volunteering. They they would pay or put a bill up, give them a bill later. But uh, they showed up, and Richard, as you mentioned earlier, it was very cool. They come out with their suits, they undress, start going running down the ramp, start kicking their ass. It was awesome. It was such a cool evolution vibe. And then uh, <laughs> Drew McIntyre, Keith Lee, both uh, were left in the ring, but then they, uh, uh, what's it called, like a swanton yeah. over the rope. <laughs> Here's the thing. There's, what, 15, 20 of those guys out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's four of the Hurt Business. Mm-hmm. And yet the Hurt Business, like especially Bobby Lashley, it looks believable that they could fend off because they're such badasses. Yeah. 
Like I'm not standing there thinking this is Austin during the before he joined the alliance. Yeah. Like and he's just stunning everyone. Like this was four guys against fifteen or twenty, and it's like with the amount of space we have here, we're just gonna swing this. Yeah. It was great. I loved it. No, it, it was very cool and um yeah, it just the match ended as a uh I believe no finish or uh so I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm guessing maybe Drew and Keith Lee are probably gonna have a rematch on next Raw. Maybe Randy Orton will be back and interfere because that will be the go home show for Clash of Champions. Yes. Which now they're calling Gold Rush. Clash of Champions Gold Rush. Well, they're going to have another match on Monday. Oh, they are? Yes. Oh, a rematch? That's been okay. confirmed. Okay. So I didn't forgot to tell you right now. So away. anyway, yeah. So Damn it, Tommy. <laughs> no, it's all good. Thank you, Tommy. I saw, I saw the commercial for it. So, so no, it's going to be, no, it, 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 it. <sighs> So yeah, it'll be interesting because that'll be the go home show for Clash Champions. See how this plays out, but no, it definitely uh, action pack episode of Raw. A lot to talk about, as you could tell, what we just did. So uh, we'll uh, jump on over to uh, Wednesday night NXT. Actually, what we're gonna do is here. I think for NXT, we'll combine NXT Prime, NXT UK made its big return this week. So mm-hmm. we'll we'll combine both here real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, Richard, just kind of initial thoughts from NXT Prime this week. I thought it was good. You know, pretty standard, good uh, storytelling NXT. Uh, yeah. I don't care for Brizango anymore. So I, <laughs> I, I pretty much skip that. Yeah. Okay. Like, I just, I just like, to me, like, if they're not doing the flashy thing the whole time, like, eh, it's not, they're, neither one of them are what, um, what they used to be. It is like the character's gone. Like, they have the entrance, and that's it. They cut their hair, and they lost it. Yeah, I'm fine it. with that, but it's just like, you know, Tyler Breeze used to come out in the, the loud colors, and now he's wrestling in black and gray, and it's like, this isn't as fun as it once was. Yeah, like, yeah. I hear and I, t- and I, take, I take both of them seriously as performers in the ring. I just, eh. I, I totally get it. I understand. Um, so, yeah, I'm with you. The show was good. There was a lot of good moments. Um but also the big thing was it was also announced that NXT TakeOver is coming back already. Uh, I believe it was Sunday, October 4th, I think it was. So that's interesting. So they're going to have a TakeOver pretty quickly here. Cool. <laughs> but it's interesting. A couple things. I think they're going to have one in October and I think another one in December. So a lot of people are speculating, oh, so no TakeOver in November around Survivor Series. Therefore, no War Games matchup. So... But I guess that's, that's that's fine with me. A couple things. One, war games should very much be like a hell in the cell. I, I like. I get it for the, the last well, three years. They kind of it was. Think of, think about this though. In order to do that, they would have to use an arena, right? Yes, and you want and they're, fans. They're, you need you want fans. Part of that is that you would have to adjust the Thunderdome quite a bit. You would have to imagine mm-hmm. to get it to fit to put another ring in. Yeah, but on top of that, each time they use that building for the Thunderdome, it costs them four hundred fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So that's an investment for one takeover. I don't think they're going to go for. Yeah, so no, I, I I get what you're saying. Yeah, as far it's as unfortunate, the, but the, it's, the it's logistics the of the quarantine. Yeah, the logistics like to set up two rings like that. And listen, I know the last three years it was on the the schedule, and luckily. It lucked out for them as far as, okay, like the first one, it was three teams of three. And then the last two years, it was four on four. Undisputed Era was involved in all of them because it was like the he- they were the heel faction taking on a group of baby faces. So you had this natural storyline. Right now, Undisputed Era is not really all on the same page right now. And they don't really have any other factions lined up. So it- there's no reason to force a War Games match if it's not needed. And I, I think in some ways, even though it's for the last three years. But to, to be play devil's advocate, you could do a women's war games again. True. Because yeah. you'd have Rhea, EO, Tegan, Shotzi, uh, Shotzi <laughs> against uh, Candice, uh, Reyna Gonzalez. Is that her name now? Ra- Raquel. 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 That's her name now. Dakota uh, Kai. Yeah, I hear you. Whoever else. Well, I'm just saying, like... I mean, it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. Well, I think I, War I, Games should be, like, hell in a cell as far as... Don't force it as a pay-per-view. It should be used as a as a, a final battle, a final setting for a really intense rivalry caught when it's needed. And luckily, I don't think there's not enough people involved to warrant a match like that. So... 
and that's fine by me. Don't force it. And war games is much better when there's a crowd there to feed off it. So don't force it. I'm with you on that. So yeah, one as you say, one of the casualties of the pandemic. I mean, we'll, we'll live. We'll get through it. Uh, but yeah, the opening match for uh, this week's NXT was the NXT Women's Championship match. Io Shirai she defeated Shotzi Blackheart. Non-title match, very good match. I'll just say this: a lot of people were saying after match it was a great star-making moment for Shotzi Blackheart. I see that partially. Great match or performance out of her, but for me, my big biggest takeaway just shows how good Io Shirai was. Io Shirai is such a talented, athletic performer, and she made Shotzi Blackheart look great in that match. So, I mean, once again, just Io. She's such an awesome performer. I love it. I don't know, Richard, is anything else to add to that? That's kind of the gist of what we were talking off the air about. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not, I'll, I'll say it. I, I'll be blunt about it. I, I think there's a lot of hype behind Shotzi Blackheart that she hasn't proven yet. Um, mm-hmm. I think she's a little late to the party, and she's got some catching up to do, but this is a good start yeah. for her. Um, yeah. Because she's you're only going to get better when you're in the ring with better people. Exactly. And Shirai is, you know, I think if you look at any company in the world right now in terms of women's wrestling, Io mm-hmm. Shirai is at the top of a lot of people's lists. Exactly. Not number one because this is a world that Charlotte Flair exists in. But yeah, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, she's she's in the top five of I think everybody. Absolutely. So I, I think for Shotzi Blackheart, I think her stock can only get better if she's in more matches. Like she was with Io Shirai, but Io Shirai, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to flat out say she carried the match, but she was working her ass off those backflips and all these let, high Let me spot. put you this way: if Shotzi Blackheart could give Aaliyah the kind of match that Io gave Shotzi, then then I will I will <laughs> retract my statement. Okay, that, that's a very good, very good point. Okay, totally. Yeah, just Io Shirai, she's such an amazing competitor. Like I said, she made herself look amazing. She made Shotzi look great. So. For Shotzi, of course, we want to see her succeed. But in this match, I thought Io did an amazing job making both performers stand out. And that just shows how talented she is. So for Shotzi, you know, hopefully she can use most momentum to, to, to keep getting better. Um, Tommy, you're telling me there's going to be what, a gauntlet match or no, excuse me, like a, a uh, rumble, a rumble, um, a rumble. battle royal, a battle, royal battle royal for all the women contenders for the number one. The winner will take on Eosurai and NXT Takeover. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know about you guys. Like, I feel like they've been doing a lot of these like battle royal type matches over the last most of this year to figure out their new number one contenders and versus maybe like m- more of an organic storyline. So I don't know. I'm just kind of like, oh, here we go, another battle royal. To- because they had like the four way member before uh, the last takeover, or uh, you know they either have four ways or triple threats or. What if they have a surprise in it though? In like who? Who who, who might have just got signed? Melina. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. 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 I like. Well, what Tommy if you got a surprise Melina Io Shirai match. That's ooh on NXT. Mm. That'd be good for a Tom- takeover. Because remember when they brought Mickey back? Yeah, against Mickey Oscar. took on Oscar for that takeover. Was that Toronto? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Tommy, you brought up a good point as far as all the competitors. Uh, a couple people were missing from it. Yeah, uh, Mercedes Martinez and uh, Mia Yim. They were not featured on the the graph, so I wonder if it kind of more or less confirms they are retribution bound. It's kind of a dead giveaway. I yeah. think so. So anyway, uh, that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. I, my early pick, the safe one, is Rhea Ripley. Because she's been eyeballing EO with that title for the longest time. So maybe they're finally going to go with that mm, matchup. I'll, I'll, I'll back you on that. Okay. Um, and then next up, we saw Finn Balor cut a promo just saying you know, when he was the first champion, he he put the NXT on his shoulders and made the brand. You All the media, the matches, you know, he had to make NXT what it is today. Now, for this time around... He's going to prove that it's the best title in WWE and just kick, go out there and kick ass. So I enjoyed this promo. Um, a couple of news related things about Finn Balor this week came out that was very interesting. So early in the week, uh, AJ Styles did an interview and he just flat out says like he's accomplished pretty much everything in WWE except win the tag titles. And he would love to have Finn Balor as his partner and win the tag championships. So that way he can be officially what a Grand Slam champion in WWE's standards. Um, and then at the end of the week, Finn Balor was doing an interview and 
I guess the question was asked about Bullet Club reunion, and he flat out said he would love to do some form of a Bullet Club reunion in WWE. Obviously, you can't call it Bullet Club, but like something as far as members. The club? The The club. (laughs) Yeah, something like that. So I got a lot of people speculating like, oh, well, maybe you can kind of combine these two concepts. Maybe Finn and AJ can work together. They are the former leaders of the Bullet Club, respectively. So, I mean, I I do think they're they're it's somewhat of a crying shame that we've not seen Gorillas of Destiny in WWE. Yeah, um, I mean, especially Tama Tonga. Yeah, he he just has such a unique look to himself because he's he's almost like a, a, a Samoan Tongan uh, yeah. Seth Rollins or Roman Reigns. It's just <laughs> kind of like. He's got that aura about him that's like cool and evil, and and he's a great wrestler. And he was there, I get it. But and his cutter is so good, like oh yeah. My. So anyway, it, it's it's kind of interesting. So one, it sucks that now these discussions are happening after Gals and Anderson are gone from the company. It would have been so cool. They would have done this with Gals and Anderson's AJ Styles and Finn. I mean, I know they teased it at was it back a couple years ago. Finn was walking down the hall and they all try to too sweet him. And he's like, nah. And it was like, no, we're now guys. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it was a wink to the audience. Like, yeah, we acknowledge we're all from Japan, you know, bullet club members. Um, there was another incident of it as well. They were trying to sweet each other. Um, and then even, uh, um, last year before survivor series, when the club invaded NXT and the three of them were staying in the ring and Finn was outside and they, you know, uh, I think did the gun signal to each other, gesture, hand gesture. So there's been always, like I said, they've been teasing it, but they never pulled the trigger, no pun intended, of that. So, I mean, it would be cool if maybe if you get Finn, get AJ, even Adam Cole. Adam Cole's a, full, a former member of Bullet Club. Maybe the three of them can, you know, do something, not necessarily call it Bullet Club, but a new name, a new faction, especially if Adam Cole, if Undisputed Era kind of part ways at some point, maybe it refer- Wait a What hmm. if, what if, oh no, never mind, that wouldn't work. God damn it. So we got two of them in NXT. I was going to say for Survivor Series, remember last year they did like Roderick Strong defend, or with the, the North American belt against Nakamura against whoever else. Yeah, the U.S. champion at the time. But I was thinking, it? yeah, but Finn Balor's on NXT and he's the world champion. So if they did that, it would be the world champions against each other. So it wouldn't work. Never mind. Yeah. Well, I hear it. I, it, it just obviously from fantasy bookings, like, oh, this is a great idea. It's a, Hopefully it's not too little too late. <sighs> but I think it's still cool because Adam Cole, Finn, and AJ are all the big names. Um but, well, and realistically, Bullet Club is not as hot as it once was by any stretch of the imagination. Like correct. this is this is what you're seeing right now of it is NWO Silver. For those of <laughs> you who remember that, yeah. So, oh yeah, that was this good is time. the last the last of it. Yes, yeah, I mean it could be like a one time thing or a short term thing. It'd be cool. I mean, just for the fans per se. But I mean, it's not going to be called Bullet Club. So maybe they'll have like a black and white logo and skulls, but not necessarily. I don't know what else what they could call it. I mean, Balor Club. I don't know. But anyway, it, it's it's it, from fancy booking. It'd be cool. And maybe, yeah, if Finn is done with being NXT champion, maybe, yeah, he can go after tag titles as well with, with AJ. That would be kind of cool pairing uh, these two elite athletes. So it'd be cool. We'll see what happens. Uh, we also saw uh, Ciampa make his return, um, defeating Desmond Troy. We saw uh, Jake Atlas come out, cut a promo. Pretty much wants revenge after Ciampa beat the crap out of him a few weeks ago. And then even later on the night, Jake Atlas kind of uh, interview in the parking lot. Ciampa came out and attacked him again. So we're going to get a matchup at some point. Yeah. It'd be cool. I mean, Jake Atlas, for still a fairly new person on the NXT roster, this is a big opportunity for him taking on Ciampa, a former NXT champion. So mm-hmm. kudos to him. Uh, Kushida in his more intense performance the beat, japanese buzzsaw beat the crap out of austin theory that's, that's tajiri yes yes i should so never mind austin theory we've been saying he's been in the doghouse for the last few weeks so he's just taking l's here another beat down here um richard as you mentioned uh brizango not as entertaining as they once were but they did defend the tag championships against imperium defeated imperium so i would imagine imperium this is their goodbye and they're probably going to go back to nxt uk 
We saw them on screen at NXT UK show this week. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, Caden Carter, Casey, that's content Zara, content. I was mispronounced. Cat and Zara. Cat and Zara. Cat and Zara. Cat and Zara. There you go. Cat and Zara. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, David Zia Lee and Jesse Kamiya, Kamiya. Uh, try to show some respect and uh, pound it out at the end. Uh, Zia Lee. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> hey now. Danny, come on. Whoa. That's two now. So, uh, so it's Z- the fist thing now. It's pounding out. <laughs> pounded out. But uh, Zia Lee didn't want nothing to do with it and uh, walked <laughs> out. And uh, so, yeah, Zia Lee, maybe she's going to start turning heel now. So uh, uh, good for her. You know, give her something to do. Uh, Drake Maverick, uh, a handicap match, take on Undisputed Era. Uh, Killian Dane finally showed up and beat the crap out of Undisputed Era. So it looks like Drake Maverick, Killian Dane are going to be the odd couple tag team here. Or uh, Richard, you said what? Frankenstein? Frankenstein tag team. Yeah. So like the odd couple don't want to be around. Well, Drake wants to be around him. Killian has want nothing to do with him. So... That's going to be interesting. But Undisputed Era, I was going to say Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong here being really bully type personas here, beating up Drake Maverick. And it looks like the two of them are doing their own thing. We saw uh, Kyle O'Reilly come out when, after uh, Jake Atlas got beat up by Ciampa in the parking lot. And he checked on him. He's like, hey, you okay? All right, get up. And he walked off. So it was like he was concerned to check on Jake Atlas, but still was like, all right, you're good. All right, I'm moving on. So I wonder if Kyle O'Reilly is going to do his own thing now. Adam Cole. Well, he's, off- he's in this uh, tournament that was also announced on the show. Yeah. yeah so William Regal announced what a gauntlet. What's it called? Um, a gauntlet elimination tournament. Oh, there you so go. so basically, two people start the match, and then four minutes, someone else comes out, and then four minutes after that, another person comes out. And, and uh, so I believe it? it's it's a uh, Kyle O'Reilly, Kushida. Kyle O'Reilly, Trev- Kushida, Trevor Lee, or uh, Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes. Uh, and there's a fourth one. Timothy Thatcher's in it. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be interesting. So, yeah, the winner will take on Finn Balor at NXT TakeOver for the NXT Championship. So, yeah, it's uh, Kyle O'Reilly. See what happens here. If he really starts getting maybe like a singles push now, and mm-hmm. maybe Undisputed Era really is going to start breaking apart here. So that's going to be something to keep your eye on. And then the main event. NXT North American Championship Damian Priest defended his title against Timothy Thatcher. I actually enjoyed this main event a lot. Timothy Thatcher, we know he's very technical, puts on submission holds. I worry at times that might be boring for just a common wrestling fan. But the fact Damian Priest here, he's more of a hard hitter, uh, can do some big spots. So I like it was the opposites as far as styles go and both reached the shine and made for a very creative and fun match. I don't know about yeah, you. It, it meshed really well. Yeah. That's, okay. Mm-hmm. Good. How about you, Richard? I concur. I okay, concur. cool. It was a very physical match. Yeah. And I love it. So Thatcher got on some submission holds, but then also he would stand up and take a beating from Damian priest. And so I really enjoyed this match. So priest got the victory here and uh, all right, I'm starting to come around. Damian priest is the North American champion. So, be interesting to see who's next opponent will be lined up. So, hey, very solid episode of NXT. Uh, What's his we'll, finishing move? The Reckoning, right? The the one that's like the crossroads? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Uh, and then another show, real quick, on Thursday was the big return of NXT UK. And this is a show that we've been looking forward to for a long time. They've been off TV as far as new episodes go for almost six months. So, it's been a very yeah. long time. Um, yeah, Richard, what's your takeaways from this uh, first episode back? I I was really pleased with all the video packages they did to help remind everyone who everybody is. Yeah. Uh, to start yeah. and in terms of I didn't care for the the opening promos the, that promo and I didn't care for the um, uh, Kaylee Ray Piper Niven promo but the in ring work was it felt like everyone stepped up yeah. quite heavy yeah and uh, everyone's in better shape yeah exactly <laughs> they had all this time off and it was just like. Kaylee Ray just looked jacked, and uh, the guys in Gallus looked like they lost weight, and mm-hmm. they gained it in their arms. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I was I was very pleased with this this uh, NXT UK because I think like you guys, I stopped watching NXT UK minus the takeovers. 
Like the takeovers were solid, but this was this was really stiff in ring action. So I was I, I loved it. Yeah, I'm with you as far as like listen, real talk. Now, listen, we have Mondays for Raw, Tuesdays currently Impact, um, Wednesdays AEW, NXT, Thursdays NXT UK, Friday SmackDown. Other promotions are starting to come back, put on shows now. So it's a lot to keep track of. So um, I'm with you. What, what did you think of that? Because uh, uh, I, I had not seen her before. This Valkyrie girl. I didn't. Valkyrie, she so, was good. Yeah. So like, so here, what I'm getting at is NXT UK. I didn't really make too much time to watch it in the past just because uh-huh. there's so much else to watch. And I was like, I got to watch other things first, give priority to um, NXT UK. I would just watch their takeovers i was blown away and i loved their takeovers the Mm -hmm. presentation i loved it and i feel now because of this the six months off and now this restart for them this relaunch i feel like this is a perfect opportunity to jump back in it's a fresh start for all the fans to start watching you know what happened in the past that's fine but like fresh new storylines they're trying to continue some stuff from the past but they're reminding you with the video packages to catch up to speed so if you're a fan and want to uh get into it this is a great opportunity to do so uh tommy how about you what was uh some things you liked about this episode um you know despite the empty you know the studio there the bt sports studio Mm -hmm. i mean it just you know andy shepherd and it's so great to have nigel mcginnis back absolutely and you know they were just so loud and animate and animated calling the matches Mm -hmm. and it, it was just terrific and the the main event i really liked the main event the noam dar <laughs> Ela Dragonoff match. I mean, they just beat the holy hell out of each other, yeah. and it was just a genuinely awesome match. And and I didn't realize that Noam Dar could actually get that aggressive and stiff in in the ring. And you know, you just that, that was definitely a different side of him. Yeah, yes. that we've seen on. He acknowledges like I've been on Raw, I've been on Two Hundred Five Live, but but you always think of him. At, I always thought of him more as a an in ring mat technician, and Dragonoff has that psychotic russian red eye <laughs> madman Co- cokehead he was cokehead coked up. yes and when he executes that's why his eyes were so red yeah and i just love he, that uh finishing move he does it he executes the uh the torpedo moscow i think he calls it yeah so it's like a european uppercut but he comes flying running at you and dives and as he's diving like spear like he's delivering the uppercut but he also plants his head yeah it's dude it, it's a badass move <laughs> i mean i i like dragging up i mean i was watching a match with him in progress against uh walter and they had such a great stiff match and i enjoyed it yeah and so tommy uh brought up a good point richard as far as i mean the studio looks beautiful the bt sports studio that they film and so it's a studio wrestling show very much like nwa has been doing mm-hmm. um but yeah, it's quiet. It's very much similar to like the performance center, the early days as far as no one in the main room. But you, you heard. Could, you, yeah, I was just going to say, you could hear that there was people there. Just didn't, yeah. I didn't see them because I wasn't looking that careful. But I think they were off screen or maybe in another room, but they were like yelling. You could still hear them, but they weren't in the main room. So, um, but to Tommy's point, Andy Shepard, who's now the new main play-by-play guy. He was the ring announcer. Uh, before. And then. Uh, um, Is he the guy with the fro? No, no, this is the guy with, uh, he's almost like a British looking Ryan Seacrest. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes, he's yes. got, he's nicely groomed. Yeah. You know? So he uh, replaced Vic Joseph, who's now on NXT Prime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he's doing play by play. Nigel's doing the color. And as Tommy said, they're both being very loud and animated. So any like dead noise you might hear in the background because no fans or anyone in attendance, they were able to cover it up with their, loud persona so that was very cool right uh but i'm with you hard hitting matches i mean it's one hour so it's very much old school nxt as far as three matches couple in-ring promos couple video packages boom you're in and out so yes. very easy to consume uh that tag match was awesome um the women's match was great but yeah the main event just noam dar i always seem more of a comedic wrestler the fact he went out there and was badass that was great and then of course seeing my boy my my my, my twin Walter come out. <laughs> I was great. I'm happy. I want more Walter now. Alexander Wolf too. So, so I oh, think yeah. I I do think despite that being a good match, I think they didn't do a, a service to the people with the main event. Because yeah, as far as as far as I feel like we could have got that same style of match from Noam Dar with someone else and and pick up the win. Oh, where Ilya okay. could have had that match with anyone else mm-hmm. and 
still looked as good as he does coming out of it. Okay. Just because, like, I, I think the that's the best uh, Norm Dare match I've seen <laughs> since uh, the Cruiserweight Classic. Yeah. So uh, kind of unfortunate that that he didn't – I mean, I get it. He had a good match, but – I thought it was a good enough match that he he could have won a match of that uh, stature. Shoot, I even remember when he had that storyline feud with um, Cedric Alexander and evolving with Alicia Fox as well. No. Foxy. Alicia Fox. Yes. Foxy. Fox. Yeah. So, I mean, it, he's been around for a minute now under yeah. WWE's umbrella, so yeah. good for him. But, uh, yeah, it just... You know, it just whets the palette of what they can do now. I'm excited. I mean, Shawn Michaels was very much featured as well in the video package. So I'm NXT UK is his baby project. So, um, that's a good sign. And then, um, uh, the tag teams, remember they all came out and mm-hmm. we're like, we want, we're going to, oh. cha- we're going to challenge, uh, Gallus for those titles. Yes. Uh, it was interesting though. Imperium were the only ones on the TV screen. So obviously they're still in Florida. I'm imagining. So why does NXT UK have more tag teams than there are tag teams on raw and there are tag teams <laughs> on SmackDown and there are tag teams on NXT. I don't know. I mean, NXT, yeah, the tag division on NXT prime is real thin right now. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's you know the the it's still a fairly new show so it's all tough the, to explain all the roster is still intact not being divided up on Raw and SmackDown so they're still their own little separate island they have plenty of people on their rosters spread out to all the different divisions it's good. there it's good it's something to watch them for Tag yeah team wrestling is a good thing folks exactly so I'm looking forward to watching it can't wait to see Walter get back in the ring if you follow him on Instagram he's been posting videos lifting weights getting ready so. I'm looking forward to more chopping. Uh, okay, last but not least is Friday Night SmackDown. We'll uh, burn through this really quick here. Um, the, the main thing, I mean, listen, we saw Cesaro uh, take on Grand Mentalik. Very good match. Yeah, I mean, uh, Lucha House Party still showing uh, uh, conflict amongst the group. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Kalisto. Yeah. Acting like he's the leader, and the other two are looking at him crazy like, what the hell are you talking about? So, the split is coming, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, Nikki Cross uh, defeated Lacey Evans. Alexa Bliss was on commentary. Richard, you really liked her her commentary. Uh, she's good at everything. She, what, what what has she done that shit the bed in WWE? I mean, she's a she's a really good in ring wrestler. Uh, I think the moment of Bliss segments are like the only ones that don't make me cringe. Like, you know, the, the Miz thing. I, I'm never invested in those. They're the always kind of. <laughs> The dirt sheet. There you yeah. go. They're better now when he's with Morrison, but like you, you pretty much know where it's going to go when you know who the guest is. So, yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. It's always obvious. And then yeah, we saw the dirt sheet this week, and um, it led to Otis coming out and beating the crap out of Miz, stripping him down to his tidy whities and then later on it was revealed that Miz and Morrison have a plan, and the plan was yeah, they filed a lawsuit against Otis, and they're going to sue him if he That's the right thing to do though. So yeah, we're gonna see how this plays out with the money in the bank briefcase. So it's it's gonna be handled in court. Danny. Yeah. So the money in the bank briefcase is gonna probably switch hands pretty soon. So we'll get into that more when that happens. Um, but yeah, Lacey Evans during the match after she lost Nikki Cross said the fiend Alexa Bliss snapped into her trance again, and it's the uh, 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 the uh, what's his move, Sister Abigail, on um on Lacey Evans. So. Alexa Bliss, I, I'm digging this is something different for her as far as she's uh, really affected. So, yeah, everyone who's been in the Fiend's presence is changed in, in some form. So Like they're possessed. Yeah. Uh, we saw Sasha Banks do an interview from the Performance Center. Bailey shows up, beats the crap out of her some more. Yeah. I was a little taken back. Like, I thought Sasha Banks, her coming back was too soon, like two weeks later. I... Like we, we talked about this before. I think she should be gone for a long time. Come back at the Royal Rumble, win, challenge Bailey for a WrestleMania match to win the SmackDown title there. Um, it, my guess is they're going to speed this up and this is going to lead to maybe a Hell in a Cell match instead. That's what I'm, I'm thinking. Because Nikki Cross is going to take on Bailey. Well, I mean, I, 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 I got two things here. I thought, I thought the Bailey thing was. I thought it was well done because Sasha had the neck brace on. So it's yeah. like it's not too soon because she is she's she's still, still nursing injuries. Yes. Yeah. Um and I like that. But I also want to say how good 
the cross and Evans match was mm-hmm. like, that was, that was like a pleasure to watch. And the fact that, uh, Lacey kept going for Nikki Cross's arm, the whole match was just really well done. And then like the icing on top was, was Alex after it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Was, oh, my, <laughs> sorry. My, uh, Alexa over there is going <laughs> off every time I say her name. <laughs> it's awesome. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, no, it, it was a great match there. Bailey doing her thing on Sasha. So hopefully by her attacking her, we'll keep off Sasha for a little bit of period of time now. I just, I'm concerned that this is going to lead to Hell in a Cell versus WrestleMania. That's my only thing. Unless it's going to be Hell in a Cell first, and then maybe. Well, they rest- have to logistically figure out how to do Hell in a Cell still. So yeah, oh uh, yeah, that's true too with the Thunderdome. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, let's also quick little shout out another bit of uh, clickbait related news. Uh, Sasha Banks was featured in the trailer for The Mandalorian season two that dropped the other day. It's going to be premiering end of October on Disney Plus. She was dressed up in a, a Jedi type outfit. So a lot of people are speculating she's going to be a Jedi on the show and so that'd be kind of cool so i wonder hypothetically to get help with her the promotion of mandalorian would they put the championship on her early to tie in with when she does promotion for mandalorian like she does interviews and has the smackdown championship around her so i don't know i wonder if her her being on the mandalorian is going to affect the booking in wwe hmm that was just something that came to my mind seeing all this. So I don't know. I mean, we'll, 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 when we get closer to end of October, we could probably figure out one way or the other. So mm-hmm. just put it out there to the clicksters' minds. Think about that. Uh, we saw AJ Styles defeat Sami Zayn. Good hard match. Yeah. Jeff Hardy came out, brought the ladder out, started mm-hmm. attacking him, and it led to what we all speculated, a triple threat for IC title at Clash of Champions. And In we, a ladder match. A ladder match. When you got all three of them, it should be a banger that night. And uh, last Those not, three, yeah. Totally. And then uh, the main <laughs> event. <laughs> Have you noticed that Sami Zayn with that beard and the hair is beginning to look like Skinner? <laughs> Steve Kern. Yes. Yeah. Dude, it is getting out of control. Yeah. How, how... It's great. Yeah. He's like, it's a good look for him. He looks like a homeless person in Berkeley or something. <laughs> good knowledge. Yeah. I, Hanging telegram. out on Telegram. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, in the main event, we saw Roman Reigns and Jay Uso taking on once again Seamus and King Corbin. Even though they got the victory last week over them, they had a rematch here. It was a Samoan street fight. But. Nothing in this match was extra different or that played into the whole Samoan, you know, heritage. Heritage. It was literally tables, chairs being brought out. It was, it was like a hardcore match. Were you expecting tiki torches? I don't know. <laughs> like, like God, coconuts. I don't know. Like, okay, I'm, Roddy Piper, <laughs> Snooker, Piper's but, Pit. But I mean, that's what it was. It pretty much was like a Texas tornado hardcore match outside. All four of them going at it. Uh, but a little bit twist as far as the ending goes because last week Jay was going to go for the victory. Roman tagged himself in and got the victory for the team and walked out. This time around, uh, Jay got one over Roman and got the victory for the team here, and they were celebrating. They hugged each other. They were smiling. Jay walked out, and then Roman's face changed into, like, pissed off, like, I'm coming for you. So He's going to beat that ass. Yeah, as he said, he's going to beat his cousin's ass at uh, Clash. Um, Let me ask you this, Richard. So a lot of people online were complaining. It's like, okay, Roman, as far as what he says in his promos, pretty much his body language is pretty much the same when he was a baby phase, it's not that much different, but now everyone's all happy because he's a quote heel, but it's not that much different when he says in his promos. Here's, here's what I have to say to that. Yeah. Uh, fuck the people online, <laughs> have your own opinions and don't just jump on people's or the same bandwagon because they agree with you. Yeah. It's stupid. Just enjoy what you're watching guys and, and have your own opinion. I love that. It's great. I mean, th- 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 the problem with Roman Reigns before was that he was cocky and he was the baby face, which but he had like this a- attitude and character like a heel. Now he's a heel and he's, he doesn't have to do anything different. This is him. This is what you didn't like about him. So you're not supposed to like him now. And another thing, too, is keep in mind, Paul Heyman is also contributing as well and adding his two cents and putting a spin on things. So it's a slight change in perception 
of his character. Yeah. And that's something you got to keep in mind. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. It's like, okay, it's like, I feel bad for Roman. You can't win with these fans. Yeah. As Daniel yeah. Bryan, Daniel Bryan these, was these right. Are people that watch to be critical, like they're not watching for enjoyment, like they're watching like you. We we don't do this podcast. So we have things to talk about. Like there are things to talk about. So we talk about it like yeah. we're not we're not making a narrative of negativity or whatever. So it's it j- just it, you, if, if you're doing this because you are a Meltzer reader or <laughs> whomever else that is angry about the state of wrestling. Fuck it. That's their jobs, and they don't like themselves. That's why they're so negative. Negative people complain about everything. Yeah, I'm with you. There's a lot of shows I, I you know, keep tabs and Twitter on. Twitter is a cesspool. That too. It is. And some of these shows, they're just they're super negative and like crap on every single segment. I'm like, why are you watching then? Yeah. All of you are a bunch of negative Nancys. Yeah, it's like between Twitter, people complain about every single segment. Yeah. And go on their podcast and spend an hour or two being super negative. I'm like, why are you watching? Yeah. Like, if, I'm, if if I was in the business of doing that, I'd be doing your other show with <laughs> Philip with you. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't here. I don't care. I don't like AEW guys. I don't watch it, so I don't talk about it. Yeah. So the, end of story. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Yeah, and then that's the thing. Don't, don't pay any attention to it. Don't pay attention to the stories. Whatever. Like if you're not because if you're not watching it, then you don't have an opinion. Yeah. If you tune in for something, some piece of a storyline or something that you think is dumb, but you don't watch the whole show week in and week out, then it's not worth your time to even comment. Yeah. You're just searching for a hug from online people. Bullseye. <laughs> well, that's a very strong point there. Very true. And on that note, I think we'll just wrap it up for this week. Uh, a couple things. Um, do we want to? Quick picks, what to watch online. You have any recommendations? Yeah. Okay, Go Richard, do you have anything? Sure. Uh, I'll give you a, my match of the week, show of the week, and a recommendation. How about okay, that? Okay, cool. Show of the week, I'm giving to Raw. Match of the week, I am giving to Gallus versus Amir Jordan and Kenny Williams from NXT UK. Oh, okay. I thought that was absolutely tremendous. Okay. Uh, and Amir Jordan and Kenny Williams were two guys before the quarantine that I saw. No value in, and then they... Kicked it up in the high gear in this. Uh, my recommendation is on the WWE Network. It is from Spring Stampede, 1994. <laughs> the Nasty Boys versus Cactus Jack and Max Payne Ooh. in a Chicago street fight. It's Ooh. brutal. <laughs> oh, my God. At one point, Mick Deep Foley cut. gets knocked off the stage, legit, and lands flat on his back. And then he also gets hit in the face with a legit shovel. You got That's my pick. That reminds me. So when I talked to Evan from uh, Dark Side of the Ring, he referenced a Nasty Boys. I think it was the Steiner Brothers match. Mm-hmm. Halloween yeah. Havoc. Yeah. So, dude, you got to hang out. Oh, well, I mean, of course, you guys both love <laughs> Terry Funk as well. So I think Evan from Dark Side of the Ring, you guys would love each other. Just like, dude, we just be good best friends. <laughs> type of thing. If he wants to hire me, I'll do it. <laughs> nice. Well, uh, uh, let's see, Tommy. Uh, match of the week, show of the week, and a recommendation on the network. My match of the week is uh, Damian Priest versus Timothy Thatcher. Right on. Uh, my show of the week, I'm going to go with NXT UK. Okay. Yeah. And um, the recommendation, I'm going to go with New Japan Pro Wrestling G1. Yeah, so uh, night one, night two, the G1 tournament debuted this weekend, and I'm super happy. Like, uh, I, I think I was telling you off the air, so I finally bought a Chromecast because New Japan is the one program that doesn't have an app, so I, I can't watch it on a Roku. So, oh, that's right, you have to log in through a website. Like yeah, Netflix used to be. So. What I, I got a Chromecast and I was able to log on to New Japan World on my phone and just sync it up with the Chromecast on my TV. So Tommy and I can now start watching some of the G1 stuff. So, I mean, obviously that's the uh, their biggest tournament of the year, arguably the best tournament every single year. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, New Japan doing big things, getting ready for uh, Wrestle Kingdom. And what about you, Danny? Uh, okay, match of the week. <laughs> You guys are gonna crap on me. Go for it, man. Just say it. Um. Oh my god, wait. What was the main event of AEW? Now I'm trying to remember what it was. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just I'm like, give me one. Second. I'm not gonna give you the Is it orange cast in my face. Oh yes, that's right. Though no, it was the street fight. So best friends took on Santana Ortiz. Oh yeah. The main event of Dynamite Street Fight. And uh, whose mom? Uh 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 
uh, Trent's mom, Sue, came out and flipped off Santana. <laughs> That was the, my match of the week. A- Everyone's talking about her mom. AEW His Dynamite mom. show of the week for me. And recommendation. Um, so speaking of tournaments, uh, Ring of Honor is doing their uh, tournament to crown a new pure champion. And last weekend was the first couple matches. Wait, uh, it, it, what, what, what is this? Is this like a, like a, a tournament of virgins? <laughs> no, pure. Oh, sorry. It took me a second. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the old pure championship. I guess they're bringing it back, uh, but it's, they have an A block and a B block uh, of uh, the bracket. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have a couple matches each weekend. It's very hard hitting, very similar to what we've seen uh, in New Japan, or even very comparable to uh, NXT UK as far as that hard hitting athletic style match. I think they have rounds too. I forgot the rules. Um, you can watch the matches. Um, on their website, I think they're free. On, I think they air Saturday or Sunday, but then they're free on Monday. So it's authentic Matt wrestling. Yeah, and and you know, listen, I, I post the links to on our Facebook and Twitter pages. If you go to Ring of Honor's YouTube page, they have these great highlight package videos that sum up the matches pretty well, length as well. So um, it's a tournament that they're going to be doing for the next few weeks, and so very much Ring of Honor trying to reestablish themselves as this hard hitting athletic style of wrestling with this tournament for the next pure champion uh but yeah it's free uh uh ring of honor honor club yes so it's free on their website by monday so if you're listening to this right now you probably go over right now and catch the those matches for free so check it out i mean ring of honor you know they kind of fell off the wagon a little bit as far as mainstream appeal but i think they're trying to build themselves back up so hey if ring of honor succeeds then you know we all succeed all wrestling succeeds and what was your show of the week AEW Dynamite. Oh, all right. I have I have a an, an, uh, a slight recommendation off of your recommendation of last week. Okay. So last because I because I watched the Austin uh, Jerry the King Lawler Broken School session. Oh, you did. After you, you you had recommended it. Yeah. Very good. Okay. But cool. uh, as a companion piece to that, I'd recommend people download the last two weeks of Jerry Lawler's podcast because oh. he had Andy Kaufman's brother on there, and they did a deep dive. On everything Andy Kaufman and wrestling, including um, like a, a short story that Andy wrote about the first time he saw wrestling and seeing uh, Buddy Rogers on TV. Nice. It's oh. very fascinating. Okay, wow. cool. All right, now check that out. That's very cool. So, um, by all means, Clicksters, if you have any recommendations for us to check out, please hit us up in the click at gmail.com. I'm thinking. I haven't, I'm just me just spitting it out. I'm thinking like maybe we should get like a, a mailing list going or something and maybe we can send updates to people. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas out there. Uh, but on that note, let's go home for tonight. Richard, where can all the clicksters find you? Well, you can find me on Instagram at Pro Wrestling 101 and nowhere else. <laughs> but please give the band that does our opening music a follow. They are Bounty Hunter Brothers. And you can find them on Instagram, Facebook, and sometimes Twitter. Nice. And plus, listen to our intro. Hopefully you enjoy it. I mean, it's the one spot you can hear Morrow every week now. <laughs> Not NXT anymore on our podcast. Actually, yeah, he Tommy, works for us. He was on a Showtime this week calling the fights on boxing. So there, you get you got Tommy Guy's Morrow fix for this week. Yep. That'll last him for next month. Tommy, did he look cuckoo crazy? He had the hair, you know, growing out, you know. <laughs> Does he say Mamma Mia in a match, in a box? Never. Match? Damn it. I'm going to miss loser. that at NXT TakeOver. Not that I know of. Uh, Tommy, where can the clicks just find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at IronFist1982. And if you want to see that tweet about, about Eli Drake, go look it up. <laughs> there you go. I'm Baby Huey. Follow me on Facebook at Baby Huey Official, Twitter and Instagram at Baby Huey83. At in the click uh, for Facebook and Twitter, Instagram as well. Subscribe to us at podcast, Spotify, Google. Please rate, comment, and share the podcast. Do the little things, pay it forward. It helps out so much. And on that note, we'll be back with next week with uh, more wrestling talk. And that's the bottom line because Huey said so.